Well, if you were an engineering student or worked in a technical field in the 70s, you no doubt remember HP's calculators. Being an engineering student having to go through the first couple of years with a slide rule, these things were literally sent from heaven. You could easily work from inside out with a calculator using reverse polis notation and not have to worry about playing around with brackets or anything else on your calculations. Much, much easier than using a conventional calculator to do a scientific calculation with an extended calculation involving a complex equation. I was an engineering student in the early 70s and can vividly remember when the HP 35 came out. I believe it was in the 1972 or 73 and got me through engineering school. After graduating, I bought an HP 65 as I had to do a whole lot of calculating work, and this took all the tedium out of doing repetitive calculations. Time marched on, batteries died, new replacements became unavailable because HP obsoleted the battery pack, figuring all the calculators right there were dead, but such was not the case. This HP 35 calculator works just as well as it did when I bought it back in the early 70s. I recently had to do some work that required an awful lot of repetitive calculations and I couldn't readily bring a laptop to the application and I still needed to do scientific calculations so I decided I'd go ahead and see what I could do about getting the old calculators back into operation so at least I could do those calculations locally. That meant getting a battery back into the calculator and making the calculator work on battery power again. The factory supplied batteries for these calculators worked quite well. You had a plastic encased three pack battery with two metal strips that made contact with the brushes on the inside of the calculator. The battery, of course, just dropped in place and the cover went in right over it. This particular battery pack uses three AA rechargeable cells and it's for demonstration purposes only. Again, you can't buy this battery pack now. Well, as you see here, the batteries will easily fit inside the case. There's a slight difference in dimensions as far as the battery spacing. Also, the only way to connect the batteries together in a pack like this is to solder them together, which is something they definitely recommend that you don't do. If you take an old battery apart, you'll note the batteries are connected together with spot welded strips to the end of the batteries. And there were two runners that were here, the metal runners that actually made contact. Unfortunately, the material they used can't be soldered. As I said before, you really can't adapt a standard foam battery pack because in the standard foam battery pack, the batteries are physically attached to each other. It's like they're welded together. As you can see here, there's a slight gap between the batteries in an HP battery pack. That means even if you can break the batteries apart, the connecting strips that tie the batteries together are still going to be slightly too short. So they still won't work in an old style plastic encasement like they did in the original HP battery pack. Time for something different. Option number one would be to take a new battery pack, cut the plug off, and then solder the wires directly to the calculator as I originally did here before I put the plug in. Option number two is to source a connecting plug from another device, in this case an old obsolete phone. Solder two short wires to the newly sourced plug and then back to the calculator terminals. This way you can plug the new battery directly into the calculator, just like the manufacturer intended, but without the strip arrangement. In my case, this is the battery I used for the HP 35. Since I already had the connector, it made more sense to use a battery with a proper connector rather than trying to splice things on the battery. And that way, of course, I could return the battery if the battery failed early. If you want something with a little more staying power, say for a 65 or 67 calculator with a card reader, this one's got a little bit more power for you. Same voltage, just a little bit more reserve power. Now for the money shot. Just how well does it work inside the calculator? As you can see here, I think pretty well. Obviously, it fits without any problem. As long as you've got the connector from another source, the only soldering you've got to do is just get the two wires back on the calculator terminals, and it drops right in. Everything fits good and tight, just like a stock battery pack. If you're going to try this approach, it's best to make sure that you have an adjustable temperature soldering set up like a good weller. 
Also, you want to make sure that uh, your iron is well tinned. You want to minimize contact, obviously, to avoid melting any plastic. As you can see here, everything couples right back up just like stock. The latches still close, and everything fits nicely in the case. The case is good and tight, and all you got to do is turn it on and use it. Now, for those of you that are more inclined to want to leave the calculator itself unmodified but have no problems modifying a new battery pack, here's a solution for you. What I've done here is take a 700 milliamp hour pack, take the outer wrap off of it, and then unsolder the plug. After unsoldering the plug, I took two inch and a half pieces of 16 gauge solid wire and then soldered them to the former plug connections. Then I bent the wire itself to make contact inside the calculator with the existing calculator contacts. As you can see here, this works just as well as the stock setup. And it's fairly easy to modify. Again, just need a good soldering iron and some patience and a little bit of the proper wire. Now, in my case, I hadn't had any problem with the battery itself just kind of loose inside of the compartment. As you can see, it does not fill the compartment very well. There is an easy solution to this if you were fortunate enough to save one of the old HP battery packs. You just take half a case of an old battery pack and insert it over the top of your new battery pack. This will secure the battery in the stock location where it can't move inside the calculator. And the cover goes right back on. Everything bolts right back up stock, so to speak, and you're ready to go back to work with your calculator. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you're finding this very useful. If you are, consider subscribing. I'd sure appreciate it. And give me a like. Until our paths cross again, thank you. Thank you very much. And y'all come on back now, yeah?